This is Jeopardy! Let us contest in today, Tuesday category. Ken, I choose fungal diseases for 400. The answer is it will cause leaf spot and blight on your orchid leaves, especially in hot, humid climates. And Ken, I believe the question is, is your orchid being attacked by Gennadia or Phyllosticta? And we have a winner! So don't put your orchids in jeopardy. Watch this video to see how to treat it. Let's get that fungal infection fixed and have them back in glorious health. Welcome to The Nature Company. If this is the kind of information you're interested in, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below, and that notification bell to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. When looking at Gennadia and Phyllosticta, a lot of orchid growers and even orchid societies lump these together as being a single pathogen, just at different sexual phases, when indeed it is not. There are two separate fungal pathogens involved in producing these diseases. They do have overlapping hosts, so it can get confusing. They both produce leaf spots and blights, which can also then make people start thinking they're the same disease. But when you're trained to look out for the different ones, you can spot which one is which. And often the reason that they all lump together like this and, and the knowledge is spread in such a way is often because people just look at one source. And if they think that it's a reputable source, they just pass that information on without fact checking. So indeed, these are two separate fungal pathogens causing these diseases. And let's have a look at them. These diseases you'll generally find most often on your vandenaceous orchids. It's generally because they like those hot, humid climates with frequent watering. And that's where they grow the best and that's where the fungus grows the best too. Also, the structure of the vander itself is particularly vulnerable to foliar fungal infections. So, it's not to say it's not going to attack your other orchids because it will also go for your cattleyas, your dendrobiums, your phalaenopsis, even your oncidiums. But you may not find it so prevalent on those because you're generally not watering them quite as frequently. Let's have a deeper look into each of these and see how we can uh, identify which one is which. Gennadia is responsible for leaf spot and blights on your orchid leaf. The infections lead to the formation of these leaf spots, which can range from small dark lesions into larger necrotic areas. The spots can be round or irregular in shape and generally start off as these small little dots. And then they elongate and run parallel with the veins of the leaf. And as they expand, they can often get these almost diamond shaped markings that go tan in the center. And then they'll slowly merge, form larger and larger markings on your leaf. It's generally not lethal, but it does make your orchid unsightly. And we generally want to keep our orchids looking as beautiful as possible. So the infection of Gennadia on your orchid is caused by the asexual phase, the anamorphic phase. This is when your orchid gets attacked and gets all these blights and leaf spots on it. Because generally during the sexual phase, the sexual phase generally happens on decaying dead material. So that's why you always have to make sure you keep your environment clean and free of dead rotting plant material so that bees can't go through their sexual phase and produce more spores to infect more orchids. Even with Cattleya, we can see how the Gennadia runs parallel with the veins of the leaves. The Phyllosticta is also a common pathogen in orchids and forms these round, circular, even slightly irregular lesions on not only the leaves, but the stem and the flowers as well. So that's one of the big differences between the two of them that makes it easier to identify the phyllosticta. Often the lesions may appear to be water-soaked. They become sort of light brown and develop dark margins or even centers as they progress. And in severe cases of phyllosticta, they defoliate your plant and your plant loses vigor. So we want our vanda looking like that, but it really doesn't. So treatment. So how do we identify this early? Well, they'll become these yellow 
indents and these will then become water soaked spots they'll be sort of kind of round or ovalish and as they age they'll turn to a like a tan or dark brown with raised edges of like purple or, or reddish and so actually as opposed to from what the other orchid societies want you to believe this disease on your orchids is formed by the same stage of development as what your gonadia is it's also the anamorphic stage which is the asexual phase and the sexual phase then too takes place on all that dead rotting decaying plant material that may be hanging around so they both the same sexual phase of different diseases that is actually attacking your orchid. So when treating Gennadia and Phyllostecta, it actually becomes more of a management program than an actual cure because it's almost impossible to get rid of it, especially once it's taken hold because it's going to be spread in from outside. And as soon as it's been spread by that initial asexual phase, getting rid of it from your garden or anywhere is going to be impossible and it's probably there naturally anyway. So we're going to have to look at management techniques more than curative measures. Of course if you do have heavy infections then you're going to have to go curative just to reduce the infection of it in your plant so your plant can become strong and virile again and be able to fight off the attack further itself. What we'd need to use is anything from those copper fungicides, which are broad spectrum fungicides, although they contact, so they need to be sprayed directly onto the areas that are affected. Your copper fungicides like your copper sulfate, your copper hydroxide, your copper oxychloride, all are excellent depending on which orchids you're spraying them on. They are a contact fungicide so you've got to make sure you spray it on the leaves and the infected areas and it's a broad spectrum fungicide so it will kill any fungus that it comes into contact with. So like your copper fungicides, chlorothalonil is also a contact broad spectrum fungicide that's used most often in preventative measures. Mancozeb, also a broad spectrum contact fungicide this is often used for both preventative and curative along with the systemic fungicides which do both jobs as well. These are the thiophanate methyls, your propiconazoles, your azoxystrobins. These are all systemic fungicides that actually have a longer lasting effect inside the tissue of your orchid itself and that will help with the preventative measures because it lasts in there a lot longer than what your contact fungicides are going to. So they have that longer action. This is a list of the active ingredients and each manufacturer in the different countries will produce these under different brand names. So just look for that active ingredient on the boxes. And each of these active ingredients has different modes of action. So these are the ones you're wanting to use in your integrated pest management system and rotate them so that you're not breeding resistant fungi. And in other words, you're keeping your orchids out of jeopardy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you're needing any further help, please hit that buy me a coffee link down below and we'll get back to you individually on what your problems are. And thank you for watching. If you have found any of this information helpful, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button down below, and that notification bell, bing bong, to be notified of all our upcoming content so you don't miss out on a thing. Help us grow as we help your orchids grow.